difficult. The problem is it is too easy to believe that it can be it can be so easy. Praise God. Yeah, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the word of God is what? Alive and full of? And let me the word of God take action. When I open my mouth, believe and speak the word. Amen? Will that take action? Hallelujah. The word of God is full of power. Powerful. Say that powerful. powerful. What is the meaning of the word powerful? Strong. Strong. Very strong. Very strong, something more. Come on. Powerful. Huh? Yeah. Something more. Active. You're, you're not giving me the right answer. Okay, okay. Now now we are using what? Light. Does it work on electric power? Yes. Come on, does it work on electric power? Yes. So what is power? I give you a hint. Is that what? What is power? Now, now, if this, if this power is not put on, what will be there over here? Darkness. So what does power do? What does power do? It brings result. There is darkness, but when I use power, the darkness is taken out and replaced with light. Who does that? Power. So when you use power, power will always bring what? Result. Power will always do what? There will be a replacement. Are you following? So there is a dynamic power. Let's say there is a rock and the dynamite explodes. What happens to the rock? It breaks into pieces. So do you see the rock again? No. It has changed. So what will power do? It will bring result. It will bring change. It will take away what is there and replace with new things. Are you following? And the word of God is what? Power. Full. It is not an electric power. It is not a solar power. It is not a nuclear power. It is God's creative divine power. So when you use the word of God, the word of God is so powerful, it will bring what? Result. So let's say somebody in your house is on the wrong side. You want that person's life to change. Now, do you go and tell that person, change your life? Yes. When you go and tell the person and give your sermon, is the person at home going to listen to your sermon? Did people in Jesus' hometown listen to Jesus' sermon? So why do you try to give sermon at home? You try to give sermon at home, it will backfire on you. Has anybody ever tried to give sermon at home? Does it work? No. You will say, my spouse will listen to the same thing that somebody from outside will say, but I said the same thing, but my spouse did not hear. It's not only in your house, it is in everybody's house. Dar ki murgi, dal baravan. Hallelujah. So what do you do? You do not preach in your own house with words. You preach with action without opening your mouth. But whatever you want the change to take place, please do not speak to the person concerned. Speak to the Holy Spirit to fix him up. My wife spoke to God to fix me up. It worked. She tried all her life to speak to me. It backfired. She got so fed up that she went to the Lord and she was crying and she was saying, I can't take it anymore. You take him and do what you want, but change it. I'm not going to interfere anymore in your affairs. Do what you want. I'm going to trust you and I'm not going to ask you anything. You beat him up, do anything, but change him. 
From that day on, crisis after crisis came into my life till I lost everything and everything went into a, a mess. And in spite of all that, she was still quiet and at peace because for her, her prayers were getting answered. And it was when it was at the break point that I was ready to submit to God and turn my heart to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. The word of God is powerful. Do you need some power? Because power will change things in your life. So if you want to change something, do you change first in the physical or do you change first in the spiritual? How did God change? Uh, when he created the sun, the moon, and the earth, and everything. The earth was void and formless, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Was God facing a biggest problem? Yes. How did he solve his problem? He opened his mouth and spoke the word of faith. Did the Holy Spirit, who was moving over the waters, uh, get into action? Some of you are blank. I think you have never heard what I said. Okay, open to Genesis chapter 1. Some of you are saying, what is he talking about? Okay, over to Genesis 1, verse number 1, 2, and 3. She has got a mic. Come on, sister. If you take so much time, my time out is at 9.30. In the beginning, when yeah. God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless. The earth was formless. Wasteland. Wasteland. And darkness covered and the abyss. And darkness covered the face of the earth. Then. While a mighty wind swept over the waters. A mighty wind or a mighty spirit of God was moving over the waters. Then God said, Then God said, Let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. Okay, okay. Now, please don't look into the Bible. Be honest. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Brother, my brother with the camera, I want you to click on all of them, giving me the right answer. The camera is on? Good. Praise God. Don't miss it, okay? And is it on a wide angle? Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. So you are on the camera now. Be careful when you answer. Okay. No looking into the Bible on the first row. You are on the camera. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and formless, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the waters. And God said, there is darkness, let there be light. And there was light. How many of you say yes, lift your hands up. And those who say no, I am going to ask you why no. Now looking into the Bible, why no? So, so, yes or no? Why no, sister? When I'm asking them, then they're putting their hands up. Why no? What about you? Yeah, good. Okay, I've got no time, but open your Bible and see what I'm saying. And, and if anybody wants counseling for anything, any problem, your problem gets solved when you understand this truth. Okay? Whatever situation you're going on in your life, if you can understand this truth, you can turn around your problem into victory. Listen to this carefully. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Watch it in your Bible and tell me what's wrong. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and formless and darkness covered the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was moving over the waters and then God said, There is darkness, let there be light. And there was light. Yes or no? Yes. In 
despite of watching in the Bible, you still make the same mistake? Do you know why, why you are saying yes? Because we read the Bible like a storybook. Concentrate on every word that I'm speaking. Let's go one more time. One more time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and formless. And darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving on the waters. And then God said, there is darkness, let there be light. And there was light. Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Why no? There was no darkness. There was darkness in verse number 2. There was darkness in verse number 2. So what do you mean say? What do you mean by saying there was no darkness? Ah, God did not say there is darkness. God did not say there is darkness. But was darkness there? Yes, yes darkness was there. Did God see darkness? Yes. Did he open his mouth and speak there is darkness? Yes. No. He did not speak there is darkness. He said let there be light. My question to you is, when you got a migraine, do you speak what you desire? Or do you speak your problem? There was darkness is, your, is God's problem. Did he speak there is darkness or did he say let there be light? So did God speak about the problem or did he speak to the problem? What do you do? Did he speak his desire or did he speak things that he did not desire? Did he speak the problem or did he speak his desire? What do you speak? And if you speak the problem, will the Spirit of God move into action or the, the evil spirit move into action? So my question to you is, when you face a problem and you are under pressure, what comes out of your mouth decides your destination. Please understand there are spiritual laws like the law of gravity. There's the law of sowing and reaping. There's a the law of sin and death and the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's a life or there's a there's a law of life and death. There's a death, life and death is in the power of your tongue. Just like everybody over here is holding a pen and writing it on the book, the Psalms 45 says, your tongue is a pen that writes on the heart. Let me repeat that again. Psalms 45 verse 1 says that your tongue is a pen that writes on your heart. So if you are annoyed with somebody and you are opening your mouth and speaking about somebody, the negative things you have written on your heart, the negative things, and out of the heart flows issues of life. So if you have written on your heart the negative things, and uh, let's say a husband and wife, the wife is hurt, the husband is hurt, the husband goes and talks to his brother, all the hurts about his wife and speaks all those negative things to his mother and the wife goes and speaks to her mother, do you know what you are doing? You are writing the words on your heart, the mother's heart, and now out of your mouth are coming only curses. The marriage is destroyed. The devil wants you to open your mouth and speak the negative words that you that you are going through. And God, who is the creator, is saying to you, listen, I have got a problem. The earth is void and formless, darkness is all around. But, but yet I did not open my mouth and I spoke what I saw. I only spoke what I wanted to see. And then I spoke what I want to 
people see the spirit of God used my word and brought it into manifestation and then I saw what I spoke was good. Can you believe you are a prophet and a prophetess of your own lives? Can you believe your words have power to choose and, and choose your destination? Can you believe your future is right under your nose and that's your tongue? Can you believe the greatest weapon that you carry with you is your tongue? That tongue can build you up and the tongue can tear you and destroy your life. How do we use the tongue? Do you need counseling? You don't need counseling. You need to practice the truth. And the truth will set you free. I said you need to practice the truth. And what would be your practicing the truth? Understanding that when God spoke the word, he, he spoke the word things. You know what is a word? A word is a thing. <coughs> That's why you tell one another, come here, I want to tell you something. You never say to somebody, come here, I want to tell you some words. You say, come here, I want to tell you something and see that you don't tell anybody anything. So what are words? Words are things. But they are not natural things, they are spiritual things. And those things that you speak with confidence carry the substance stored in it. And if you are opening your mouth and speaking about your problems and, and, and with confidence you are speaking the, your problems and, and you are you're imagining and you are full of worry and you're, with all that meditation you are opening your mouth and speaking my friend, you just spoke a, a raw material which is going to manifest in the future. So let's take for example, the child is rebellious, extremely stubborn. What will the mother keep on saying? My child is stubborn, my child is not studying, my child is all the time cranky. My child has got this allergy, my child has got that allergy, my child is this, my child is that. And now all that you spoke was cursing the child. Because those things will come to pass. If the, child, if, if the, if the doctor said, your child has got Down syndrome, what will you go around telling everybody? You know, I just came, we just came from Wales. And we were sitting there and our, our whole session got over and we were just about to leave and a lady came to me and said in the month of April I came to attend your service I took the white book and all that you thought I began to go home and I began to revise all that you thought my baby has got a down syndrome she's three years old and all this time I accepted that she was Down syndrome, but from the time I heard the word of God, I refused to accept it anymore. And I began to speak on my baby, laying hands on my baby for the last four months, scriptures of the scriptures. Hey brother, I want to tell you, my daughter has started to speak natural words, normal words. My daughter has begun to look into the eye, which she was not doing. My daughter has begun to change completely. And I want to tell you, 95% she's back to normal. What changed her? The words. There's another person my brother Aman was sharing with me, and this child is about six years old, suffering from some brain problem. Her feet and all are cupped inside, toes going inside, the fingers and all. It's not straight. Okay. And when the parents came, he began to share with them Psalms 57 verse 1 when, when I say, Jesus, you are my healer, he heals me. Jesus, you are my deliverer, he delivers me. Jesus, you are my savior, he saves me. Jesus, you are my protector, he protects me. But when I say, Jesus, you are the most high God, the Bible says, God performs on my behalf. God performs on my behalf means what nobody on this earth can do, he performs. He rewards me 
3. He brings his plans in my life. 4. He brings them to completion. 5. He sends help from heaven. 6. He saves me from slander. 7. His truth, his faithfulness, his blessings, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, they follow me all the days of my life. And he began to tell this parents, if you are able to confess this word, Jesus, you are the most high God, and pray over your child every day, you will see the miracle. And this Irish, they are not Indians, this Irish couple believed and went back home. And they began to say over their baby, Jesus, you are the most high God and you have performed great and mighty miracle on my baby. You have rewarded her. You have brought your plan in her life and brought it to completion and every plan of Satan has got cancelled. Lord, I thank you that you have you sent help from heaven to us and you have saved my baby and your, and your blessings are following my baby day and night. And they began to do this and they came back and said, they sent a video and Brother Ahmad sent me a video what they recorded on the mobile and they said, can you look at the feet? The feet have become straight. Can you look at the hands? Her hands have become straight. And now she has started opening her mouth and speaking words. Just in one week, All this time, what were the parents saying? They were only saying what they saw. What were they saying? They only said what the doctor said to them. They never said what God said. They never said what Jesus said. What are you saying, my friend? Come what are you saying? God said, let there be light. What are you saying? There's darkness in my life. There's a curse in my life. I think I'm in a bondage. I think nothing good is happening in my life. I'm in a curse. I think somebody has put a spell on me. The other day we were studying in uh, 